pieces here, and to look at them, most people would think that they look like just about the same thing. I'll start with this one here. Hopefully he'll stick his, his neck out or something. This is a loggerhead musk turtle. This is a turtle that specializes in living in rivers. Uh, it comes down uh, in the um, in the Withlacoochee River system all the way into central Florida. Uh, they're found all the way up into uh, Georgia and parts of Alabama. Uh, but it is a turtle that specializes in living in rivers. At its maximum size, it's around five inches or so, so it stays pretty small. Now the loggerhead muster, when it gets big, a little bigger than this, they have a really big head and they use their strong jaws for crushing snails, which is their favorite food. So uh, even though this looks like a small turtle, you wouldn't think of it eating something with a really hard shell like a, a snail or even a clam, but they do. They have really strong jaws. You wouldn't want to get bit by one of these. Even though it's a small turtle, uh, it could take a little chunk out of your hand. I've got another type of musk turtle here. This one's called the stink pot or common musk turtle. People use different names. Common musk turtle seems a little nicer than calling them the stink pot. But uh, this is about as big as they get. This is the smallest turtle in the world. And I'm actually going to pull out another one really quick here. You guys can probably barely see it from out there, but this is a baby stink pot. They hatch about the size of a jelly bean. So very, very small turtle. And, and this is about as big as they get. Now, you can find this turtle just about anywhere where there's permanent water. So they're in lakes, rivers, ponds, uh, even ditches along the road, as long as there's some kind of permanent water that doesn't dry up too much. Like the loggerhead moss turtle, they like to eat snails, but they'll also eat a lot of other things. Now, you might wonder why it gets the name musk turtle, and that is because they kind of emit an unpleasant odor when you pick them up in the wild. They usually lose that in captivity because they get used to you. But the musk turtle does kind of have a smell to it uh, if you disturb them. It's kind of the skunk of the turtle world, if you will. I've got another one here that you're probably going to barely be able to tell from the musk turtle, but this is actually a mud turtle. This is a striped mud turtle, though the old ones sometimes don't even have stripes. There is a way to tell the musk turtle and the mud turtle apart. If you look at their bottom shells there, their plastrons, it looks different, doesn't it? The musk turtle that I'm holding in this hand here has a very small plastron, and the mud turtle has a bigger plastron. And this mud turtle, the plastron, actually has hinges, just like the box turtle. Remember I showed you how the box turtle could close its shell? The mud turtle has two hinges, so it can move the back of its shell and the front of its shell. Whereas the musk turtle has this kind of small, fleshy plastron. So there is a difference, even though they look very similar. Now the mud turtle is probably the most common turtle in Florida. So if you find a little turtle crossing the road, chances are it's going to be one of these guys. They're very common, very abundant, and it really is a turtle that is characteristic of Florida. When you get out of Florida, it's hard to find these striped mud turtles, even though they range all the way up to about Virginia and into central Georgia. Uh, we rarely ever see them. They're outnumbered by other species of mud turtles. 